this top ranking warlock in Africa was about to board a flight where he was actually going to be sacrificed because his influence over the kingdom of darkness and over this entire world and his access into Christians' lives was so great that every other demonic presence and person in the country wanted a piece of his blood. And he didn't know it, but he was actually on his way to his death. The same day that he was going there, the Lord spoke to a 19-year-old girl to go and speak to him and share the gospel with him. Whether you've seen this testimony already or not, stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to share some truth about the spiritual realm that you need to know. Now, that morning, I am um, leaving to go to the airport to pick a flight to Italy that morning, 7 a.m. So as I come out of my room, she meets me out of my place. So she says, oh my God, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> so in her heart, she says, ah, let me first go back and pray. I'll preach to him later. So I pass her. Now, as I pass her, she says, the Lord told her, call him. So I pass, she says, James. I didn't answer back because no one there had called me that name. I was called master, including my lecturers. Oh. Everyone called me master. Master James. Master James. Master, just master. Master. Yeah, master. <laughs> uh, even the people in the police master. and government all called me master. So Sheesh. I remember this girl calling me James, but she could not call me master because she had a master, mm. Jesus. <laughs> so I kept walking. She called again, James. She called a third time, James. Now, I know in the laws of the occult, if you are challenged thrice and you don't respond, you've been defeated. Oh. So in my mind, I said, but let, I'm going to let me punish her. So I was, I'm there in anger. And I feel, so she had the ability to bring me to the point of anger mm. by just calling me. Now, that's very important because at the point of anger, you are zero your power. You've lost authority when you get angry. So in those in the kingdom of darkness, no. Anyone who has the ability to bring to a place of anger has disarmed you. So I had forgotten that at that point because I felt anger. I would have remained calm and confident and move on on my work. But now, because I felt the pride in me, you know, they are so proud. So I felt like she is challenging me and I felt angry. So in my mind, I'm, I'm like, what can I do? I could, like, can I kill her here? Or can I blind her? Or can I make her mad? And I could do that in a few minutes, just a second, a few seconds. I've ever done that in several lives. So I knew I could turn to her, project into her eyes and make her mad. Mm. So I said, okay. Let me make her mad. She's going to undress, walk naked through campus until I return. So I turned to her to do that in my mind. And then when I looked at her eyes, to project her eyes, flashes of light, bolts of light were coming from her eyes and were hitting me. Wow. Like thrice. I said, what have I seen? I look at the guy again. I'm hit. Then, I look. <laughs> then I'm saying, what kind of person is this? I fought many thousands, bishops, pastors. What kind of this? So I look at this another time. Like, and every time that flash hits me, the powers disappear. Hmm. She hits me the pad, and she's not saying a word, just looking at me. Then I knew. Wow. Now it's battle. Now it's battle. battle. <laughs> because I had never encountered such kind of power. Hmm. I never seen. And what kind of girl was this? I just thought it was just a young lady. So I really now had to summon support, project and call witches and wizards in the territory, all those that were serving under me. Right there on the spot, you're communicating to uh, witches and wizards all around, so summoning their powers, summoning to, come powers to come and help me. So in just a few minutes, 600 of them are around me. She cannot see them, but they are now around me. They are invisible to her. But me, I know I have six, an army of 600. So what I need to do now is that all of other 600 form together and attack her at once in, in that 600 forces join into one. Mm -hmm. So I have to be bold enough to look at her one more time and then project, then all the 600 can attack. Hmm. So she's standing there and the Lord just told her, she told me later, the Lord told her, be still and know that I'm God. Amen. And then the Lord told her, be so calm. Good. So in all this, I'm closing my eyes, I'm looking at her, she maintains a smile. Wow. It's like the smile that's like saying, I'm in charge. And she's just looking at me. So I look at her and now I want the 600 to come at her, to attack her. And where she's standing, and I'm not seeing her. I'm just seeing a pillar of light connecting into heaven wow. in a place. And then I look into the pillar of light. A man, now I know it's Jesus, is looking at me. Wow. Just look at me. Now, the moment his eyes touched my eyes, Ooh. I saw the 600 taking off in 600 direction, screaming and running, including Lucifer himself. He was present. I didn't know that time. They were, like I could see. And she's not, she does, I'm just seeing all these demons from childhood are living. 
instantly, just by a look. You know, there's this thing people say that there's a wrestling between Jesus and Satan. It's impossible. Mm. Satan and his demons cannot fight when yeah. Jesus appears. Mm. They, no, he can't. Yeah, yeah. They can't. There's like, you know, people, oh, the devil is attacking Jesus. It's impossible. No. It can't. It can't. Why? Every knee bows and every mm. tongue. So when yep. he appears, Satan cannot put up a fight. There's no yep. wrestling between the two. He has to run away. Mm. The only battle is really just with yourself. It's it's in your own soul. God doesn't wrestle with Satan. He has to, go, and he, I don't know where he goes, but he has to go because I saw that moment. He just looked at me, no wrestling, no fight, no shouting, no like fire and what. Just looked at me in that pillar of light and everything. But you were disarmed. Disarmed. You fell on the floor. So I'm, I'm standing. Oh, you're standing. Okay. okay. I'm standing. So I, I but my eyes closed because now for the first time, I'm demonless. No demon, no spirit on me. I'm like human. Hmm. So I opened my eyes to look at him and say, what kind of person is this? Now, when I opened my eyes another time, the pillar is not there. The man is not there. The girl is standing there. Hmm. You get what I'm about? <laughs> so, and now, I just know I'm disarmed. Hmm. I'm in fear for the first time in my life because I don't have a spirit. I look at her and then the Lord tells her, go to him. She begins to walk towards me and every step she takes is like an earthquake. I could feel the ground. She, like the Lord is causing me to know who she is in the spirit. She's a giant. So she's moving and the ground is shaking. The foundation is shaking. Steps that she comes near me. And I cannot run away because I've been now arrested. I've been arrested. I can't, my feet are bound. I can't run away. And I'm in fear. I don't know what she's going to do to me. So she looks at me. And then she gives me a hug. That was my first hug in life. What? At 24. What? I had never been hugged. So she years. hugs me. And she says, James, Jesus loves you. Oh. And you don't know what that word did to me. Mm. I felt like all my faculties were being formed. Mm. Like I, for the first time in life, wow. I cried. That was the first time I cried. The first time you cried? At 24. I cried at 24. Wow. So she gives me this hug and I, I begin crying and she begin crying. But the cry is like a baby and a mother getting back a baby. So she's holding me tight and I'm crying like a baby. And she's also crying. I don't know what's going on. But during the cry, there's love. There's all my emotions are being revived. It's like I'm becoming human the first time. So she's hugging me. And then after minutes of crying and crying, then by the time some other students are gathering around us. And they're wondering what's going on. And, and they're saying, this is a witch we know him. This is a believer, a Christian. And they are hugging and they are crying. So they're wondering, who is capturing? Who is converting who? Who is converting who? And so they're forming a sack around me. Oh my word. So after the, the cry, I'm crying, then... She says, James, what do you want? Then I remember I told her. This 19-year-old girl was obeying God more than most pastors, Christians, 99%. She recognized Jesus as the gentleman. Notice, after this man just had a miraculous encounter with God, you would think most people would say, well, God would instantly just save him and instantly bring him out. But yet still, God had to allow him to choose. God, God was knocking on the door. God still couldn't ram through the door of his heart. Jesus fully presented himself and then said, what do you want? Then I remember I told her, I need Jesus. Mm. Then she tells me, talk to him, mm. tell him. So I said, Jesus, I want to serve mm. you. I don't know why I said that, I want, I want to serve you. Come so on. she led me in the prayer of confession and do I say, it was 7.45 a.m. 7.45 a.m. 3rd wow. September. 3rd September, wow. 1999. See, this is what we need to talk about. Here in America, our walk with God is so limited to just a day out of the week and a special hobby. But this man in Africa understood the reality of the spiritual realm. And I know some of you are still maybe even questioning whether it could be real or not. And if you are, I wanted to challenge you. Do you remember when you learned about the difference between two dimensions and 3D dimensions? It was so real to you that you even laughed at how someone could doubt the third dimension. That's the only way you can understand your walk with God. That's the only way you can have faith. That's why the Bible says faith is of the heart and not of the head. You're not going to believe all these things in your mind. You're not going to be able to see all these things with your physical eyes, but the spiritual realm is more real than you could ever understand. And as I'm speaking to you right now, what's crazy about this testimony though, is this man is not the only one who has 600 demonic spirits all around him working for exactly what he desires, but there have been demonic spirits that have been attacking you and you haven't even been aware of it. And the reason that I even believe this 
video came across your YouTube page is because God's hand wants to touch you and set you free today. There is power in the name of Jesus and his blood is more thick than you could ever understand. And no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter how far you have gone, no matter how many times in your life you've been on the fence and you've just said, yes, I'll serve God, but you've held back other areas. I encourage you, give him everything. But if you really want to live, you got to die. And I challenge you, I could pray with you right here on this video. And, and believe me, I will here soon. But before we pray, I wanted to encourage you to make the sacrifice and die to yourself today so that you can live through the blood of Christ. Take the risk. You've tried everything else. You've gone after every other endeavor and you've trusted in your job and in your family and in your school and in your friends and in your social media account for joy and life and peace. You've served so many other gods. Why not today lay them all down and serve the God that created you in the first place? As I see you as a viewer, God wants to tell you right now that he believes in you, that he is for you, that he has never left your side and he has invested his entire possession, his entire life itself, his entire existence, God has said, I will sacrifice it for you. Not just for billions of people. Yes, sure, like you may think it's billions of people, but there's only one person that Jesus was thinking on, on that cross, and it was you. How beautiful is that? You say, Gabe, I don't believe you. Well, <laughs> trust me. When you see Jesus and you're almost dead in a two and a half week coma and you encounter him, <laughs> you let me know what you think because he changes everything. <laughs> I saw the same Jesus he saw. And let me just tell you, he's so real and he's ministering to you right now. He's speaking to you right now. And let me pray for you before you leave. Father God, I thank you for this one. I thank you that you have already paid the price for their victory. I thank you that they don't need to wrestle with Satan anymore. I thank you they don't need to wrestle with darkness, but instead they can just make the decision right now to say yes to your blood. They can repent of their sins. They can come back to your glory because God, you welcome them in. I thank you the room that you gave them, the house that their name is on has not been thrown in the trash. I thank you, Lord, for filling them now with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Be sure to click this video because my testimony where I was in that coma for two and a half weeks, Jesus showed me some things that you would never even imagine. Right.